Well, after a week's delay in the launch, we finally have the first batch of Ryzen 9000 here. I'm specifically talking about the Ryzen 5 9600X and Ryzen 7 9700X. And honestly, I'm very impressed with the performance of these CPUs, though maybe not for the reasons you might imagine. But especially I'm impressed with the price tag they put on them. Damn, AMD is coming in hot. However, before we get into that, I want to chat with you guys and also with AMD about several things. First, I need to get this off my chest. Initially, these CPUs were supposed to launch on July 31st altogether, that is Ryzen 5, 7 and 9. However, as we know, not only was the launch postponed, but it was split in two. Ryzen 5 and 7 launch today and Ryzen 9 launches next week on the 14th. Apparently, the delay happened because, in AMD's words, they were meeting expectations. This led us to think that there was something wrong with the chips themselves, that they weren't performing as expected. However, it was later leaked in many media outlets that the apparent reason for the delay was actually a printing error, where the CPU said Ryzen 9 9700X instead of Ryzen 7 9700X. Is this a reasonable argument to delay this launch? Maybe, I don't know. But if this was the reason, what does it have to do with splitting the launch into two? Moreover, logic would dictate that the Ryzen 7s should be the last to come out since they are the ones that need rebranding. To me, honestly, this smells like the real reason for the delay is something else. And I don't even know if this has to do anything with the performance of the CPUs, with a typo, or even if it's more related to the blue team. But what would Intel have to do with all this? Well, if you've been following the topic, you probably know by now that Team Blue has been going from bad to worse with a bunch of problems on their 13th and 14th generation CPUs. And apparently, they promised that by mid-August, they would release a microcode update for their CPUs to fix it. What is the issue? It's expected that this microcode will significantly lower the performance of the chips as it would notably decrease the amount of voltage they can access. So basically, what we have is a silent war here where on one hand, Intel is delaying the release of the microcode, trying to get the media outlets like us to test the new Ryzen chips against the 14th gen chips under current conditions before the potential performance loss they'll have. And AMD for its part, it's trying to postpone its market release to force Intel to release the microcode before, so their CPUs look how they should look in comparison. Who is right here? Well, in my opinion, neither. AMD because, if this is true, they are not being honest with us about the real reasons for postponing the launch. And they are also doubling their media exposure by explaining the release date into two, today and next week, for no obvious reason and Intel especially because they are postponing giving a solution to their customers and risking more CPUs getting damaged as more time passes. Regarding Intel, honestly, I think it's terrible that after months and months of reports, complaints, RMAs and whatnot, they still haven't given a concrete solution to the problem. And if we add this to the fact that we really don't know what performance will look on their CPUs after the microcode, I have made a really hard decision that I never made before. I'm not even gonna consider them for this AMD launch. It makes no actual sense to me to waste hours and hours doing benchmarks that might not even reflect reality in a week or two once they update. However, I will make another video once everything is as it should be and I'll update you guys with the topic. And don't worry, I'll do it, I'll put some reference numbers in the graphs, but even if Intel performed better than AMD, which is not the case, I couldn't even recommend them until this issue is a thing of the past. Regarding AMD, while I understand what they're doing and why they're doing it, and I know the blue team isn't playing too fair, I think they could be a little bit clearer in their communications, giving more specific reasons for why they do things, and above all, they could give us, the media, the samples a little bit earlier. These CPUs that I have here literally arrived on Monday at noon, knowing that the video had to be out on Wednesday morning, effectively giving me and my team less than 48 hours to test, draw conclusions, write a script, record, edit and publish. We cannot work like this. I'm literally exhausted and sleep deprived, so a like from you and a comment would be greatly appreciated. But well, leaving the rant aside, let's get to the meat of the matter. The CPUs we have here are two and we already know the technical part, so I'm gonna skim over it. Both chips have the same number of cores and threads of the predecessors, 612 and 816, and yes, they are all performance cores, meaning that we don't have some different cores than others. 
Boost speeds in both cases are increased by 100 MHz, but base speeds in both cases are decreased considerably. And perhaps the most important change we see from one generation to the next is the change in lithography in the CCXs, going from 5 nanometers to 4 nanometers, with the new Zen 5 architecture, of course. Which, by the way, comes with a substantial reduction of the default TDP of each CPU, going from 105 watts to just 65 watts in both cases. Oh, but definitely the best thing these new CPUs have, at least on paper, is their price. One would think that, with the bad moment Intel's going through, AMD would want to take advantage of this and raise the prices of their CPUs, since they basically have no competition. But no, the new Ryzen's will not only not cost more than their predecessors, but they won't even cost the same as what the Ryzen 7000 did at launch. The Ryzen 5 9600X will cost $279, US dollars, that is $20 less than what the 7600X cost at launch, and the Ryzen 7 9700X will cost $359, or in other words, $30 less than what the 7700X cost when it hit the market. With the technical advantage that AMD has right now, honestly, they could have played us and charged us basically whatever they wanted, but they didn't. So good on you, AMD. But well, let's get to the heart of the matter, the tests. In our test bench, we are obviously using the two new Ryzen 9000 CPUs and their equivalent from the 7000 series. And yes, as anticipated, we indeed didn't do tests for Intel because until they solve their problems, it makes no sense to recommend them. Starting with the synthetic benchmarks with Cinebench 2024 single core, we see that the promise of a 16% increase in IPC is very close to reality, achieving a 14% and 13% difference in the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 uh, respectively versus Ryzen 7000. In multi-core, obviously the difference drops to 8 and 5%, which it's not a small thing, especially if we take into account the consumption and temperature of the chips. We'll talk about that later, don't worry. In the rest of the productivity tests, we see an increase between 1% and 17% approximately, averaging a total of 9.2% increase for the Ryzen 5 and 7.2% for the Ryzen 7, with V-Ray having the most noticeable difference and 7-Zip practically having no difference at all, with the new Ryzen even having minimal performance loss in decompression. I am not 100% sure why this happened, but I repeated the tests and the results remained the same, also the difference was minimal. About gaming, we tested 6 games, all in 1080p Ultra, and the average gain was honestly minimal, with both CPUs averaging around 3% gains versus Ryzen 7000. Could there be more difference if we put the benchmarks to the max, lowering resolutions and qualities? Yes, of course. But what's the point of testing a Ryzen 9000 CPU at 720p with everything on minimum, if it's going to give us a result that, beyond the theoretical, won't be of any use to us? For that, we have benchmarks like 3 Mark, which have specific CPU scores in gaming applications where clearly the difference is a little bit higher, although not by much either. Now, where the real difference in this Ryzen 9000 comes, it's in temperatures and power consumption. And in fact, look at the beauty of this chart, where you can see from miles away the temperature difference between first, the Ryzen 5 7600X and the Ryzen 5 9600X, with almost 20 degrees Celsius of difference. And between the Ryzen 7 7700X and the Ryzen 7 9700X with almost 30 degrees of difference. If you were one of those who complained and didn't like the temperatures of the Ryzen 7000, well, rejoice, because this is a beauty. And that's even before you even see the power consumption. In the Ryzen 5, we went from an average of 118 watts to less than 90, almost 30 watts difference. And in the Ryzen 7, we went from an average of 132 watts to also less than 90 watts. That is more than 40 watts difference in power consumption. It's crazy. Okay. As you can see, the performance increase from one generation to the next is not particularly mind-blowing. Yes, there are applications that will benefit more than others, but on average, there is not a generational increase that will make you lose your mind. However, if we take into consideration the power consumption, temperatures and prices, we are left with CPUs that, yes, perform on average 8% better in productivity and 3% better in gaming, but at the same time consume 29% less than the previous generation, heat up much less, and also costs less. That's insane. Now, we can't forget also that if power consumption and temperatures are not a problem for you, the 7000 series chips have dropped in price a lot. Right now, a Ryzen 5 7600X costs about $196 on Amazon, 
and the Ryzen 7 7700X cost $287, which makes them great options for those looking for brutal performance just slightly below the new generation, but at lower prices. Interestingly, the non-X Ryzen 7000s like the 7600 and 7700 are not such a good deal anymore, especially considering how much the 7600X and 7700X have dropped in price. They cost basically the same now. Anyway guys, my conclusion about this launch is that at least these two CPUs have my approval from every point of view. However, I have a feeling that it won't be a very successful launch. Because, being honest, most of you care about raw performance. Maybe the temperature issue is attractive for a few, and also power consumption in countries where energy is expensive is relevant, but let's be real, performance is king for you, and this is not the biggest generational leap in recent times. However, it's undeniable that AMD improved in everything they needed to improve, maintained what they needed to maintain, and even lowered prices, so all I can say is, I wanna wait and see what happens with the Ryzen 9 to see how they do, but for now, Bravo AMD! What about you? Do you feel like buying any of this? Are you sticking with the 7000s? Or are you on the blue team? I'll read you in the comments. As always, I send you a huge hug, my name is Wayan, and I'll see you in the next video.